Hello and welcome to Circuits 101 Basics. In this video we're going to be talking about current dividers and resistors in parallel and uh, we're going to see how they kind of interact and do the fun things that they do. So let's start off and let's talk about resistors in parallel because we're going to need some equations. So resistors in parallel, fairly simple, they look like this. So it means that this top end of this resistor is touching this top end of this resistor directly. And this bottom end is touching this bottom end directly. So we could also, you know, do something, we, we could make it look like this if we wanted to. It's the same circuit, just written, you know, kind of curvy. So same circuit right here. And uh, we could even add, you know, another resistor here, which would be like, you know, adding a, another resistor here. And so these are, these are parallel resistors. So now let's uh, let's create an equation to turn you know, these three resistors or four resistors or ten resistors into one single resistor. And this one single resistor we call R E Q. E Q uh, comes from equivalent, so equivalent or so resistance equivalence equivalent resistance R E Q. So let's uh, let's look at that equation. So let's say that this is R one. Say this is R two, and this is R three. And we want to find that equivalent resistance. So our REQ is going to equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And then we're going to take the inverse of that or the, or the reciprocal. So uh, let's, let's do a numerical example and uh, let's, uh, let's see this in action. So let's say we have, let's say, three resistors. And each of these are going to be 33 ohms. 33, 33, 33 ohms, ohms, ohms. And we want to find our equivalent resistance, our REQ, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to plug things in. And so we get 1 over 33 plus, which is this guy, 1 over 33, which is this guy, plus 1 over 33, which is this guy. And take the reciprocal of that. And so we find that our little equation here is equal to 3 over 33 to the negative 1, which is equal to 1 over 11 to the negative 1, which is equal to 11 ohms. So our REQ is equal to 11 ohms. Okay, let's do one more that's kind of hard, and then I'm going to give you another equation that's kind of handy. Some people like it. You don't have to use it, but it's it's useful. So let's say we have another circuit. We're going to make this a little smaller. We're only going to use two. One and two. And say that our R1 is going to be, oh, 5 ohms. And our R2 is going to be 10 ohms. And so we plug this in, and we have 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms to the negative 1. And we do fancy fraction math, and we get 2 tenths plus 1 tenth the negative 1, which gives us 3 over 10 to the negative 1, which gives us 10 over 3, which is equal to 3.3 volts, or sorry, 3.3 .3 ohms. 3.3 .3 ohms. Okay, so that was pretty easy, but uh, there's possibly, depending on how crazy your fractions are, uh, an easier equation to use. So we're going to derive it directly from scratch, and then uh, you can memorize it. But you know, equations are useless if you don't know how they came about. So this is R1, this is R2, and we're going to find some equation that gives us our REQ without doing the fancy reciprocal stuff, right? REQ. So rather than putting numbers, we're just going to leave it algebraic. And so we get 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 to the negative 1 which is equal to, I'm going to take this R2 right here, and I'm going to multiply it by the top and bottom of this first fraction. So we're going to get R2 over R1 plus, oops, sorry, R1 times R2 plus, and now we're going to take this R1, and we're going to multiply it by the top and bottom of this fraction. And so we're going to get R1 over R1 times R2 to the negative 1. And so now we can do more fancy fraction math, and we get R1 plus R2 all over R1 times R2 to the negative 1. So I just added these, these two together. 
And then we take the reciprocal of that and we get R1 times R2 all over R1 plus R2. Um, and if you're taking a circuits class, you've probably seen this. Um, if you got lost watching the professor or he didn't explain it, that's where this equation comes from. And now a quick little blip here is this only works for two resistors. It doesn't work for three, it doesn't work for four, it doesn't work for five. So for example, you can't do R3 you know, and add your R3 like this. It doesn't work that way. If you uh, do the math, um, you know, keep things in algebraic terms, you'll see that it doesn't work. If you try to use this for more than two, um, you're going to run into some issues. Now, granted, what you can do, so let's say we have three, one, two, three. What you can do, is, if you really wanted to, is you could use this equation and you could do these two at a time. So then you're going to get some equivalent resistance and then another one that you haven't worked with yet, and then do these two. So you can do it that way if you really want to, but uh, in that case, it's much faster to just do the, the reciprocal thing. 2 plus 1 over R3, then I get 1. Okay, so now we have our equation for finding the equivalent resistance. Let's actually use that and, uh, and apply that to a current divider. Okay, <clears throat> so if we're dividing current, we should probably have a current source, right? So let's say we have our current source right here, and let's say that it is 5 amps. And let's say we're going to connect this to just two resistors, one resistor, two resistor, and let's say that this first resistor is 2 ohms, and the second resistor is 3 ohms. So the first thing we want to do, or well, what we want to do is we want to find the voltage at this point first, uh, so that we can use Ohm's law. And by the way, for you sticklers, the ground's right here, which means that at this point, there's zero volts. Okay, so we want to find the voltage at this node right here, which is the same as the voltage can be the same there, and the voltage is going to be the same there. So how do we do that? So let's turn this into a simpler circuit that we can work with. And so we're going to turn this into an equivalent circuit with an equivalent resistance. This is going to be our REQ. And so if we plug things in, Let's plug things in. And so we're going to get uh, 2 times 3 over 2 plus 3, which equals 2, 6 over 5. That was using that equation I just showed you. Ohms. So our REQ is going to equal to 1.2 ohms. Gotcha. Let me scroll down just a little bit, give myself some more room. OK. So now we have room to play with Ohm's law. So we have some voltage that we don't know yet, which is the voltage up here. And we want to find that. And so we have V equals IR. So V equals 5 amps times 6 over 5 ohms. And we do math. We find these, we, we find these cancel out. And our voltage then is equal to 6 volts. So up here, we have 6 volts. OK. So now we can use Ohm's law again. And by the way, we're going to get another equation here in a little bit. Um, but we want to do it the manual way first to understand why that equation works. So now we want to find the current that is flowing down this branch. And we're going to call that I1. And we also want to find the current that's flowing down this branch. And we're going to call that I2. And so let's find that first branch first. So we know that our voltage is 6 volts because we just found that. And we want to find our I1. And then we have our resistor right here that we want to plug in. So times... 2 ohms. And so we can divide both sides by 2 by 2 and we find that our I1 is equal to 3 amps. And we do the same thing for the other side. So and let's make this boxy. And so we have 6 volts is equal to our I2, which is on this side, and it is 3 ohms times 3 ohms and we can divide 3 by both sides, 3 by both sides, and we find that our I2 is equal to 2 amps. Ta -da. Now, if you notice right here, we have 3 amps and we have 2 amps. If we add those together, we get 5 amps, which we can use to double check because since we have 5 amps here and we have 5 amps here, we probably did things right. Okay, so current divider. We divided this current of 5 amps into 2 amps coming down this branch, so this branch is 2 amps, and 3 amps coming down this branch, 3 amps. 
Okay, so let's get to a new page that's a little less messy, and let's find an equation for that. Okay, so we have one, we have two, and we have our current source. And our current source, the amount of current, we're going to call this, um, we're going to call this big I. And technically, there's you should be using big I and little I for different things, but in this particular um, example, we're going to use big I and little I. So we're going to call this I1. We're going to call this I2. And we're going to call this R1. And we're going to call this R2. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find our, our equivalent resistance, right? And so we change this into, oh, and then we're going to have some voltage up here. So we turn this into our equivalent resistance, and our equivalent resistance is R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. And this is equal to REQ, right? Right. Okay. So now let's find our voltage. Our voltage is pretty easy. And so we have our voltage here is going to be equal to our I, which is our little guy right here, times our REQ, which is equal to V, oops, sorry, which is equal to I times R1 times R2 all over R1 plus R2. All right, so we got that far. So now we know our voltage, and our voltage is equal to this fancy mess down here. Now let's try to solve for one of these currents. And so we're going to use our V equals IR stuff that we learned before. And so we're going to get our voltage, which is I times R1 times R2 all over R1 plus R2. That's our voltage. So we're using Ohm's law to solve for I1 equals I1 times R1. Okay. So we want to get I1 all by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by R1, both sides by R1, this R1 cancels out with this R1, and we find that our equation becomes, for I1, is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times our I. And we can do a similar treatment, and we can find that our R, our I2 is equal to our R1 over R1 plus R2 times I. Okay, so let's let's break this down. Let's let's make this a little easier to understand for the general case. So you don't have to do this fancy math every single time. So let's say we have three resistors. One, two, these are connected. Three. And this is R1. R2, R3, and we have I1, I2, and I3. So our I1 is going to be equal to R2 plus R3 over R1 plus R2 plus R3. Our I2 is going to be equal to, oops, times your current source which is up here, I forgot to draw it, I'm sorry. Don't hit me. And so we have R1 plus R3 over, and I'll explain how I'm getting these in just a second. R1 plus R2 plus R3, and our I3 is going to be equal to R1 plus R2, oops, that's a two, over R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, so, Oh, times i. Okay, so now we have our handy dandy equations for the circuit, but how do we get them and how do we do this for mole resistors? So if you notice here, when we're looking for the currents going through one resistor, it is discluded from that particular equation. So uh, we want to find the, uh, the current going through R1, so we don't have R1 in our numerator. 
same thing here. You know, if we're looking for the amount of current going through R2, which is I2, we don't have an R2 at the top. Same thing, R3. Notice we're missing R3 at the top. On the bottom are all of the resistors in parallel added up together. So if we decided to add an R4 here, an R4, our equation for that R4 would be, and these equations kind of become slightly, uh, slightly modified, but the equation for the current going through I4 would be equal to everything but R4, which is R1 plus R2 plus R3, everything but R4, all over, all of them added, added together. R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 times our currents right there. And uh, you probably can't see that. There you go. So, there you go. There's your simplified equation for a current divider going through a particular element. So let's do our summary, and then we'll end the video. So, resist. Oh, one more thing I forgot to add. So, the, I uh, if you watch my current divider video, or my uh, yeah, that's the one you're watching right now. If you watch my voltage divider video, it gave you an example of something that looks like it's in parallel, but it's not. And so, let's say we have something like this. Now, these three guys are in parallel. Let me grab a different color. And these three guys are in parallel. But these two guys are not in parallel. The reason they're not in parallel is because you have this funky little thing in the middle. So whenever you have something like this, This is not a parallel. These are not resistors in parallel. This is actually something called a delta circuit, which is another video entirely. Um, and it's not something you run into all that much until you get into power systems and start working with three phase. Um, but this is not parallel. The reason it's not parallel is because this guy's, you know, getting in the way. All right, so now let's do our summary. <laughs> I'm getting off track. Okay, so summary. So parallel circuit parallel uh, resistor circuit looks like this and you can simplify this into one resistor called REQ using the equation 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and if you had you know a lot of other resistors in parallel you, know, you can add those as many as you like and you take the reciprocal if you have only two uh, parallel resistors two parallel resistors your equation can be simplified to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 for your equivalent resistance equals REQ. And our current divider, which is kind of funky, you know, let's say we've got one, two, three. Uh, what this is going to equal is, let's say we're looking at R1 and we have our current I1, our, our current for, oh, and then we have our current source. Let's not forget that. Let's say that's I in. So I1 is going to be equal to the sum of all the resistors. So that would be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus however many R's you have. And then on the top, you have basically the sum of all resistors minus R1. So that's saying, you know, R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5 plus however many you have. And since we uh, we don't have R1 in there, we subtract R1. So this is just kind of a, a more clean way to write it that works for all circumstances. Um, so there you go. Current dividers and parallel resistors.